This is a race rich in cycling heritage. Dating back to 1952, it's the oldest stage race in Australia. To conquer this race, you'll need to be a complete rider. Post a good time in the opening prologue. Battle the fast men in the sprints. And when the roads tilt upwards, climb to Arthur's seat and climb to glory. It all starts here in Melbourne city centre. It's the 62nd running of the Jayco Herald Sun Tour. Hello and welcome to Australia's oldest stage race. It's the 62nd edition of the Jayco Herald Sun Tour, a race of five days. I'm Phil Liggett, alongside me is Olympic gold medalist of 2000, Scott McGrory. Well, this is also the final event in Australia's summer of cycling. And I hope you've been following our coverage because it all began on January the 2nd. But this one is a big finale. We're right here in the city of Melbourne, Scott. Phil, you go to races all around the world and there's not too many that get to have a race right in the centre of a major city like Melbourne. And the prologue time trial today, it's only short, two kilometres, yeah. but it's got a great backdrop here. And then from, uh, from the prologue, then we head from Mount Macedon up to Bendigo, where I live, so I'm yeah, looking forward yeah. to that stage, that's in yeah. stage one. Then we go across to Nagambi, two stages over there, mm -hmm. and then head down to the big finale with uh, the ascent of Arthur's seat on the Mornington Peninsula. That's going to be a very tough stage. Now, the race has brought together 16 teams, a big field of 94 riders, but there are some teams to really mark the occasion. MTN Quebec, the first all-African team are here, and they've just been given a wild card place in the summer's Tour de France back in Europe. We've also got the defending champion in Simon Clark, and he'll try to win this event again. But there are other riders too. Oh, absolutely. Franco Pelizzotti, a veteran of cycling, Italian, but he's going to be very strong when they get down to Arthur's seat on that final stage. Yeah. And look out for Patrick Bevan, riding for the Avanti team, the New Zealand rider. He's a special character who was in the National Road Series last year. Okay. He's going to be one to watch as well. All right, well, let's get underway and let's first of all catch up on the team presentation. The team from Oregon Green Edge. Yeah, obviously here we're looking to defend the Sun Tour and, and uh, try and win that again. Um, we've got a good team here, everyone's going well and the guys that are racing here knew uh, many months ago that they would be racing here and have been preparing accordingly. So everyone uh, who's here knew that they were up for the challenge and are up for the challenge and we're going to be out there to defend it as best as possible. The Brinks now coming back down under to collect more glory from Australia. Uh, I think uh, between our team uh, with JLT Condor and uh, the British national team, you've got some real talent there. Uh, especially with the national teams, very they're you know a lot of track riders, and uh, they'll be very good at a short discipline like this. You know, we've got a couple guys here like uh, you know Rich Hanley and Felix English that will uh, should fare well on this as well. Oh, it looks good. It's a good uh, good way to kind of kick the season off. Uh, today's course is quite short and technical, so it should be exciting. And after that, it's uh, it's a good balance. You know, there's some flat stages. There's some hard stages, so we'll see. Yeah, I think it could suit me because it's so short and you know, there's lots of corners to kick out, kick out of which will suit me. Um, I don't know if we'll really suit the TT guys that really need to get into a rhythm, so it could go either way, you know. A good TT rider can take it out or I think, you know, a sprinter. It's the first uh, for me race uh, in the year, with, and uh, it's uh, difficult, no? And uh, I start uh, the season uh, easy, and uh, but uh, I look uh, day for day. No, it's good to be in Australia. I mean, it's my first time here, and so far it's been really amazing. I mean, I come from Europe now, and the weather is not so good, and it's good to be down here in the sunshine. Yeah. It's a great event, and. Uh, Every year, we look forward to coming back and, and showcasing our skills in front of the home crowd, not only in Australia, but for me in Melbourne. So the teams are now ready for the opening prologue time trial. It's the Corda Mentha Real Estate over 2.1 kilometres. A race of tooth, we call it, because the best time wins, the riders go individually. Well, the first and second riders from last year are not on the start line this time, but Will Clark, who was third, and also Felix English, who was fourth, they are. So they'll be really gunning to try and get the stage victory today. But look out for Tyler Farrar from uh, the South African team. He's yeah. an American rider, but a very fast sprinter. And it's a technical course as well. So he's the sort of rider that can get around these corners fast as well. But there's also guys like Steel Von Hoff, who fancies his chances tonight. Perhaps Brenton Jones for Drapak as well. Drapak are on fire at the moment. This will be a very closely fought event, but remember, 
that every second counts and the man that wins takes the first leader's jersey when we go out on the open roads on day two. The tactics for today are very complicated. There's a lot to it. Basically, get out of the blocks, go as hard as you can, get to the finish line. It's all about speed maintenance, so through the corners, take some risks, get it back up to speed, hold the speed, and the winner will take some risks and be punchy out of the corners. Let's have a look at the Cordamenta Prologue, 2.1 kilometre Scott. This is really tricky, especially at the start. It is as they go across the Princess Bridge as they come out of Federation Square. Then they turn left and go downhill along Petticoat Lane. And then you see the first of the really tricky bits, that tight left-hand corner as they go into Boathouse Road. And a couple of little chicanes down along there as well. They have to get their timing just right with the barricades. And then it's a strong headwind all the way down South Bank Boulevard to reach the finish line at Queensbridge Square. Well, this is the first rider to go, and it's Robert Power here. He really is a top youngster in the making, this rider. And he's been a little bit unlucky in being the first man to go. No one to chase. First of the 94, terrific effort. Adverse camera slams the brakes on. It is a very, very tricky start. You see how hard he went out of the start house there and then straight onto the brakes. Now this is coming out of Federation Square and here he goes across Princess Bridge and then the pace really does pick up as he goes down Petticoat Lane into this one here, the very tight corner now as they go down past the boathouse and then it's a headwind all the way into the finish. He is a superstar of the future, Robert Power, but it's not quite the course for him today. 45 seconds behind him, taking the start house here is uh, Chris Lawless, one of the young under 23 riders from the Great Britain national team. Not quite an aggressive start like we've just seen out of Robbie Power. Power's heading up towards the finishing line now. He's on the long straight, but he's got to keep slamming those brakes on. I think it's a, a good job there's no rain like there was at the start of the day. And now back down to the finishing line here because here comes Power. First to start, first to finish. This will set the marker. Two minutes and 47 seconds on the line. First right of the start, first to finish, so of course the best time. But it isn't really the type of circuit that Robert Power is suited to. He's waiting for the climbs as we go out onto the road of stage one. Chris Lawless now as he comes around that very tight corner. Well, Lawless has got the best the time at the point there. Four seconds four up on Power. We'll see what he comes home with as we watch here the start now of Cameron Worth. He's riding for the Cordamenta Real Estate team, the men in black. And he was second overall in this race one year ago. He only lost the race by eight seconds. Well, he might be in familiar territories. We see Lawless coming through the finish line now. Time faster than we saw of Robert Power. Pretty good performance, 242.1 seconds there. Alistair Donoghue, the Australian para road cycling champion. One or two riders are saying that this might be a surprise ride here by young Donahue. Big effort as he comes out. He's a handy sprinter, Phil. Not necessarily a great time trialer, but he's very quick and good at bike handling. So the tight corners, which are going to be very important today, you need to be a very good bike handler if you're going to get fast around this corner. Cameron Worth, as he goes down towards the boat shed, this is where I think he might be in familiar territory. A former rower, we won't be looking at the boats this time, just looking at the finish line as he comes up to complete his ride. So Worth comes in and his time there, 2.45, so a little bit off the pace. It's still being held by Chris Lawless with his ride at 2.42 as we go back down to the start house. Mitch lovelock Fay from the Avanti Racing Team. Now the first of that team to take the start line. Registered as a New Zealand team this year, but they have been for a long time. Registered as an Australian squad and they won the overall series last year in the National Road Series with Joe Cooper. We'll see him later on, Mitch Lovelock's teammate. Yes, the Avanti team have been having a, a quite a successful time in New Zealand. Joe Cooper winning the national title there. As we come up to the line, this is Donahue finishing. His time is going to be uh, 244.1. Just off the pace again. Yeah. Still surviving yeah. is the time of Chris Lawless yeah, with a 242. <laughs> Let's go to the start. Today. American, this guy Danny um, Summerhill had a great year last year and he's hoping to start it right now here in Melbourne. The United Healthcare team. We saw them come out last year and ride the Jaco Herald Sun Tour. Oh, very fast through that second corner. Lovelock Fay now. He's coming down Petticoat Lane. 
Turning that hard corner. It's a good exit to this corner. You can see how narrow it is on the way in, but a very wide exit up to the finish line this time for Mitt Lovelock Faye. 244.06 for him. So again, the young 23-year-old British rider, Chris Lawless, is on the stage there, nervously watching them come and go and surviving in not just the yellow jersey seat, but also the best young rider under 23. Back down to the start house here now. This is Matt Bramier. The last time he raced with distinction out of Melbourne was in the World Championships here when they were held in 2010. He was in the breakaway right from the gun when the race started from Federation Square. Chris Lawless from Great Britain in the middle of the picture there. He is in the hot set. They've got the first three fastest riders up here on the podium. Well, this is the arrival here of Danny Summerhill. He's very close to Lawless's time. He misses it by just half a second, 242.8. Chris Lawless can smile in the center there. But there is a change in the hot seat order, though, as Danny Summerhill comes up on stage. Meanwhile, back at the start here, Damien Housen, the Orica Green Edge top time trialist. There might be a change coming now. Former world champion in the under-23 time trial. Hazenhausen, very good over the longer distances. Let's see what he can do over two kilometres. But he does have a track background. He did do team pursuit and individual pursuit in his younger days. So two kilometres, he might have the power to do it. Bremier now coming up to that tricky corner, coming down towards the boat shed now. Headwind all the way from here into the finish. He's just a little bit off the pace of the top three on the stage there. 244.16 for Matt Bramier. Meanwhile, on course here, Damien Hauser may have looked as though he made a fairly casual start, but he is pushing the leaderboard here by his checks, and as Hauser comes up towards the finishing line here, he hits the line, his time is 241.28. He's up on the stage as they all change. Chris Lawless has now lost the first position as he steps down to sit in second. That was a solid performance from the Orica Green Edge rider, Damien Housen, and you can just see how much it hurt. It's written all over his face. Yeah, it's a, it's a shorter course, which obviously doesn't suit myself. I'm, I prefer the 30, 40, 50K time trials and uh, 2K. Yeah, it's uh, short acceleration and a few technical corners, but um, yeah, I'm pleased it's early stages at this, this moment and there's a lot of good riders to come still. They certainly are. With 15 riders gone, though, it's Damien Hausen who is holding the hot seat position with a time of 2 minutes 41. Welcome back to downtown Melbourne, Crown, the world's most livable city for the third year running and to the prologue time trial of the Jayco Herald Sun Tour. The riders underway going at 45 second intervals. And they couldn't be in the, more in the centre of any city, Scott. Chris Lawless there, now down into second place. Damien Housen is the leader on the board. Well, David Edwards, under-23 rider, riding for the Charter Mason Giant racing team. Powerful rider. You'd expect a reasonable time from him. He was second in the under-23 Criterium National Championship in Ballarat a few weeks ago. So his form is good. And this rider on the attack in the Cadell Evans Great Ocean Classic over the weekend. Brody Talbot for Team Budget Forklifts underway as well. A massive crowd enjoying a warm summer's evening now because it's a bit chilly earlier in the day. And this course takes them right down past the famous uh, restaurant mall. Dave Edwards then making his way around the far bend on the course. Pushing into the headwind now, down towards the finish line. Dave Edwards is looking good. He's right in the mix. Third best time as wow. he comes across the line. Not bad result at all. 242.59. Well, that's put him up on the stage in the third place position. It's still Damien Housen in the hot seat, though, and Chris Lawless in second. Now, this man might change that leader's order. This is Joe Cooper, the New Zealand rider on the Avanti racing team. And just a couple of weeks ago was crowned the champion road race of New Zealand. So let's see how he goes. Well, he's the national champion last year in the time trial. And there's Dave Edwards taking his third place position in the hot seats up on the podium at the finish line. Damien Housen still in the top spot at the moment as Brody Talbot, who's a climber for the budget forklifts team, comes across the line in what was a fairly leisurely pace. Adam Phelan from Drapak Cycling now, the next rider to start. Now, this is another rider who's very consistent, and Drapak uh, 
have a number of people in the team who could do a good time trial and this is the first one Adam Phelan and he really is attacking this corner just fingertipping those brakes around the bends and accelerating well Joe Cooper now looking very good at the halfway point so this could be the new best time you can see him in that tuck position he's such a good time trialer coming in towards the finish and look at the time he's coming up here this is the best time for the moment at least 238.64 the champion of the road race of New Zealand goes into the golden seat for now. This is Serge Powells of Belgium here. He's really better known as a sprinter as he launches for MTN Quebec, the African squad. Well, there's Joe Cooper warming down. That's a good time. He knows how to go fast against the clock, that's for sure. Whether it's a long distance or a short one like this, Adam Phelan next time really trying to hit the apex around that corner. And this is where it gets really tough. It's a headwind all the way into the line. He set the best time at the one kilometre, 131. Can he convert it? No, he slots into second place, Adam Phelan. So he slowed over that last kilometre of the course and Joe Cooper still in the hot seat. Well, that was a very good time. He's well, it's so close at the top. And perhaps David this is another rider that can go for that top spot to from Orica Green Edge. Edge. It is the big it's New Zealander, Sam Bewley, former rider on the it's track program in the team pursuit for the New Zealanders. So he knows how to go fast over short distances, perhaps two kilometres, just what he needs. He's a big man to get round that starting horseshoe bend there and get out on the course as the crowd continues to swell. He's underway now. This is Harry Carpenter here of the Jaco AIS Australian. This is really the Australian national squad uh, making their way down to the start. Now the news reaching us, Sam Bewley has set the best time after one kilometre. One minute 30.64, 65. Now if he can hold on to that, he's going to set a new best time here. As he comes up towards the line, Sam Bewley just gets the best time of the day. 237.19, he kept it going. Well, the Kiwi member of the Orica Green Edge squad has done pretty well there. Yeah, well, didn't really know what to expect on that course, to be honest. It's one of those courses that, you know, if you lose a second in the corners, then it could be a race, but seemed to have some power on the straight, so a lot of riders to go, so we'll, we'll see what happens. What was it like amongst the crowd? Nice crowd? Oh, awesome, man. All the, all the fans have come out, and uh, we've got our team owner, Jerry Ryan, over here with the sponsors and stuff, so it's great to have them out as well. Well, all smiles here. Paul van der Ploeg is a massive giant of a man. I always feel he should be better placed in AFL football. He gets the start. And down at the finish there, Sam Bewley has got the best time so far. 2 minutes 37.19. Phil, you can expect something special from Paul van der Ploeg. He really does tackle these tight courses with so much gusto. Well, there's Sam Bewley. He's number one. Kiwi's holding first and second at the moment. Just away from the cycle race is the centre of Melbourne, and it's famous for its obsession with coffee. Many of the city's most remarkable hotspots are hidden behind nondescript closed doors and in unexpected locations in the city's network of laneways. But here on the start line and the finishing road on the south bank, the prologue continues as we now go up to the start house once again. Lachlan Norris from the Drapak cycling team comes from Castlemaine in central Victoria. He's part of my training bunch up in Bendigo quite often. He's a good time trialer. I'm not too sure how he's going to go flicking around these corners, though. But he was a very good mountain biker back in his day, but made the transition across the road now. Paul van der Ploeg, big, powerful rider from Charter Mason, was the former world champion in the mountain bike eliminator race. He's looking pretty good. He set the best time at one kilometre, 129.32. He's coming up to line. Can you believe this? He's missed the top spot by less than six tenths of a second. And I do know that van der Ploeg out on course had a gear problem. It must have cost him that time. So he goes into second place. Sam Bewley stays on top. Struggling for breath there, Paul van der Ploeg, such a big effort. Yes, the start of a long campaign, this for MTN Quebec. They've been given a wild card place in the Tour de France in July. And big moments now for this African team as they get underway. Songo Jim winds away, takes the uh, sharp left-hander with caution. 
It's going to be a big year for his teammate in Matt Goss, as well as you see Lockie Norris come down onto the Boathouse Avenue, heading down towards the finish. A little bit off the pace, still a good performance. He's looking for the overall classification, Lockie Norris. He's waiting for the hills that will come out on course in the next few stages. Yes, he hasn't endangered the leaderboard there. It's still Sam Buley and uh, Paul van der Ploeg separated by just half a second. Now, can Cameron Meyer do anything about that? Former world champion on the velodrome. Can that translate to a fast two-kilometer time trial here on a very tricky course? You can see really putting in the effort to get out of Federation Square onto the Princess Bridge and then that fast downhill run as they go down towards South Bank Promenade and the run into the finish. And wrestling his bike up the home straight here. Songhezo Jim is coming through, but the time indicating it's not going to be a terrific time. As he comes in now, 2 minutes 52.1, so he's down the leaderboard a little bit with that. But he'll get better over the next few days. Well, Stu Shaw, you can see, just on the elbow on the right-hand side, had a very nasty crash in the Cadell Evans road race on Sunday. The doctors were unable to stitch it up. The wound was so wide, so they've really just bandaged it together. And it's a brave performance by Stu Shaw, the big rider from Canberra, to come out today and have another go. Well, pretty looking. You see him on the start line here as we go back to Cam Meyer. The indications are that Cam Meyer is not going to set the best time here as he heads down. It's going to be a very good time, mind you. He's going to be very close to the leaderboard, still with the 237. Final effort by Cam Meyer up to the line, grits his teeth. It's going to be a fast time. It may not be the best, but it's 238.79. That puts him right up amongst the top five for the moment. All the way from Ballarat. So close to the leaders. Such a short race, meaning it's only one and two, three seconds difference. As we see Pat Shaw from Avanti Racing now go off the front. Such an animated rider. Would expect to see a lot from him over the next couple of days. He'll be going in breakaway groups, working hard for his team. And he'll put in a good performance today, but I'm not sure if it's going to be fast enough to get the better of some of the real speedsters. Well, Stewie Shaw here. That damaged elbow really just uh, 48 hours ago may have affected his form a little bit he's going to finish quite a way down here he's about 10 seconds off the pace of the leaderboard at the moment still gritting his teeth as he comes up towards the line 246 has gone by 247 hits the line 248.52 so uh, just about the tail end of the field for stewie shaw there so now let's go back to the start house drop back uh, starting to provide with all the brenton big guns jones here now brenton jones who signed for the team uh, throughout the close season looking to start the most important year of his career and he's also promised us a great time today scott now we're going to find out he has promised we know he's put a lot of work into this as we see Shaw now coming down onto boathouse road the run into the finish well, south bank promenade here phil out of the saddle really trying to get something out of it riding a massive gear into this headwind up to the finish line a little bit down the rankings he wasn't right up there in the halfway point no hits the line he was laboring on that heavy gear coming up a 248 for him as well which is going to put them in the bottom quarter of the finishes now this is brenton jones though and out on course the times are coming in thick and fast and brenton jones has done a very very good partway time as he's gone through and is he going to confirm it as he comes up towards the line here? Brenton Jones is going to settle for the best time as he hits the line. Brenton Jones, best time for him as he comes home. 236.85, so the best time so far, just ahead of Sam Bewley, less than one second in front of the big Kiwi. And you can see how pumped up he was. A few deep breaths, Brenton. That's an outstanding ride. You've knocked everybody off the top with that one. That's what I wanted, you know, to, to be in the hot seat. I don't care what happens after this, just to say I've been up there and in the hot seat. And if I can hang on, that's great. If I'm not, you know, to say I've got to the number one spot and been knocked off by a better bike rider is you know, what you want at the end of the day. Well, this is Mac Goss now, the Australian who switched the MTN Quebec team. He gets his first start and the best time in at the finish now is Brenton Jones, his first year on Drapak. 236.85 the time to beat. Melbourne is a vibrant city most of the time, but in the evening it really comes alive. 
The bars are right by where the riders are taking part in the 2.1 kilometer prologue of the Jayco Herald Sun Tour. And the people enjoying the drinks here are on the streets watching the riders flash by. Still in the hot seat, Brenton Jones, the time to beat 2 minutes 36.85. Surely Michael Hepburn can get close to that. Former world champion in the 4,000 metre individual pursuit on the velodrome and also world champion in the team pursuit. A rider that would be one of the favourites to go for the victory here. We see Matt Goss on the downhill run here down Petticoat Lane. And a sharp left-hander into Boathouse Road. Big season for Matthew Goss in the new colours of Quebecer MTN. Yes, that's uh, with, uh, with Matt Goss here. He's got to show himself this year. He lost his place on the Orica Green Edge squad, so he tried to really find himself now. It's a big effort by Matt Goss, but it's not going to affect the leaderboard. He's more of a sprinter. He likes to get the time trials Here out of the way. That's the time to beat. Still the time of 2.36 of Brenton Jones as we join Jack Beckinsale now on the under-23 Australian squad. And he'll be one of the riders that will be looking for the first of the under-23 riders. He rides for the Avanti team normally, but for this particular event, he's here with the under-23s. Now, Michael Hepburn around that tight corner, looking quite comfortable, the big Queenslander. Well, Hepburn is tickling the leaderboard at the halfway mark. Now, can he come home with a good time to do it? He goes down the straight here. He's still shooting at the 2.36 of Brenton Jones, he's only just going to miss this out, it just ticks by, he crosses the line, 237.26, he'll go into third place. Well, it is so close, you see Paul van der Ploeg now taking the mountain biker's exit from the podium, jumping straight off the stage, and now Michael Hepburn, the Queenslander now coming up onto the stage for Orica Green Edge. Cameron Bailey from search to retain health.com.au, the next rider to start, had a breakthrough season in 2014 in the National Road Series. And we expect big things from him in 2015. As Ken Bailey makes a start, he makes the run down the ramp in Federation Square. It's a lovely evening now, and the crowd building all of the time here as they come out of the offices. Barely around the top bend, they're down to the embankment. Meanwhile, back towards the finish, we've got Jack Beckinsale coming home. We see him putting his hands over the handlebars there into a more aerodynamic position, trying to beat the clock here, but not the best time. Four seconds off the fastest time so far set by Brenton Jones. Well, Brenton Jones, another breathing sigh relief there, and a swig of water, but it's goodbye to Chris Lawless now as he steps down as the leading under-23 rider. Final five-second countdown for Van der Ploeg. Well, we saw Paul van der Ploeg jump off the podium just moments ago. His brother Neil now for the Avanti Racing Team getting underway. He's a rider on really good form this season, third in the Australian Road Championships. That was a surprise, one of the first the riders to really put it amongst the big guys from Norica Green Edge. Cam Bailey now from searchtoretain.com.au coming down towards the finish. Well, he's working hard here, but the time is indicating he's a little bit off the pace here. About six seconds too slow to the line. 243.73 for Cameron Bailey. Uh, he's waiting for the hard roads once we get out into the open road stages. Hepburn on the left, third fastest time. Interesting rider now for MTN Quebecer. This is Tyler Farrar, one of the few riders in the world that has won a stage in all three of the Grand Tours, but now finding himself back in a professional continental team outside the World Tour. So he's got a big point to prove this year as well. Yes, first time he's raced here in Australia as well as he goes down. Now let's go to Neil van der Ploeg. We saw his brother knocked off the third place slot by Damien Housen. Neil van der Ploeg has great form and the times are saying he's not far off the pace here. Can he finish with a very good time and maybe claim a place on the stage? It's going to be desperately close here. Remember, the best time is still a 2.36 and the clock is going 2.36. He's just gone by 2.37.22. But for the moment, at least, he'll go third. When we talk about like these big gaps that you normally have, only one second was the gap there between first and third. But Caleb Ewan, the superstar of Australian cycling, still only under 23, but he's in a world tour team. It's our very own Orica Green Edge squad, and he's one of the favourites for the prologue. Well, Neil van der Ploeg uh, getting rid of Damien Housen there. And it was Damien Housen that got rid of his brother Paul off the podium. Now, Caleb Ewan, the big superstar, he's made his start while Tyler Farah here gritting his teeth 
is now heading up towards the finish. Not a bad ride for a man who's regarded as a sprinter, not quite on the leaderboard, 240.15 but he's setting himself up for a top 20 finish there. Well, he's showing signs of desperation as he came across the finish line as well, really throwing his bike. Warming up now here, we see Stil von Hoff, Australian Criterium champion, looking to get ready. Not far away from where the 2.1 kilometer prologue time trial, the Hedel Sun Tour takes place. This is a city of beach, of architecture, of modern art. Melbourne is all set to entertain once again the opening of the oldest bicycle stage race in Australia. A massive crowd now, more than 25,000 spectators being treated to the time trial and still the best time being held by the 23-year-old Brenton Jones. Two minutes, 36.85, the time to beat. Steele von Hoff says he can beat it. He is a man that would expect to go very close to the best time. Riding for the quarter Mentha Real Estate Australian national team. Group of professional riders they've put together the to make a super team as our national team. You can see how fast he was off the start there as well. The Australian Criterium champion crowned in Ballarat only a matter of weeks ago and then a stage winner in South Australia at the Tour Down Under. Yes, now let's go further forward here. We're watching Calabune, the 20 and a half year old superstar of the future here for Orica Green Edge. He's already had a couple of wins this year, but we haven't seen his ability at the time trial. But I can tell you, he's not very far off the best time here as he races up towards the line. He's still aiming at 236.85. It is going to be desperately close here as he hits the line. 236.42, 44 hundredths of a second. Caleb Ewan has taken the lead. The, one of the youngest riders in the race. Unbelievable. Is there nothing this young man can do? He is an absolute superstar already of Australian cycling. Yeah, you know, it's tough out there. Um, I had to, had to save a fair bit coming into the finish because it was a headwind and, you know, I got that inside of my teammate Cam Mai, so it's good to, you know, it's good to go sort of towards the end of the race. And yeah, you know, I, I dug deep and then it paid off at the moment. Only about 19 riders left to finish. Do you fancy your chances? Um, yeah, you know, I think, as you can see, you know, Brenton and I have gone fast, so, you know, it's definitely not a pure TT T riders course, so, um, you know, anything can happen and, and it's pretty tough. Well, it can still happen with a handful of riders still to start. This is Sam Whitmitz who makes his move for budget forklifts. Big rider, lives in Bendigo, big powerful man. He would expect to do a fairly quick time here today. He's just got to get around these tricky corners as he heads out across the Princess Bridge. Caleb Bjorn in the hot seat, looking a little bit more relaxed now. Had a deep breath and here's Stil von Hoff. So the Australian Criterium champion. Just a little bit awkward around that corner as he comes down onto the Boathouse Road. Even so, Scott, he's gone through the first check in third place. If he can continue to progress like the other riders have, he could be on the best time here. As he revs up towards the finish now, Steel von Hoff, who last year finished in sixth place and just off the pace, is just off the pace again. Only by fractions of a second, but he slipped down the leaderboard there and there'll be no prize tonight for Steel. Well, less than two seconds off the mark there, still von Hoff. So still very close in the mix. Now, this is a new rider in new colours to Australian cycling, Patrick Bevan. He came across from New Zealand towards the end of last year, won the Tour of Tasmania. And a very difficult race, number 61. The rider that's on tipping to really go for the overall classification, not perhaps the prologue time trial here today, but he will be a rider that will be trying to push Simon Clark all the way to the very end, as we see Whitmitz now coming down onto the Yarra River. Well, Whitmitz himself has gone through the check in the top 10 positions, so he's right up amongst it. Many of these riders just trying to survive here with a good performance, not losing too much time to the leaderboard. I'm planning their attack later on. That's the way it seems to be here. Whitmitz crosses the line, 239.2. Very respectable time. Well, 12 months ago, Will Clark was third in the prologue time trial. The two riders that were first and second in front of him, 
were not on the start list today, Phil. So he inherits that favourite tag for today's race. Well, he knows what he's got to do. Ewan has finished. He knows the time of Ewan, 2.36.42. And he knows the time of his teammate, Brenton Jones, 2.36.85. So, Will Clark is underway, and last year, by the way, he won two prologue time trials. Back out on course. Patrick Bevan looking a little bit more hesitant. It's a tricky course. You have to be fast, that's obvious, but you've got to nail those turns perfectly as well. Well, he's still up amongst it here, Patrick Bevan, as he comes up towards the finishing line. He won't be far off the top three as he hits the line. Well, the seconds do count. He's gone across the line sixth place at the moment, 237.65. Surprise, surprise, Will Clark best on course. Well, this is Franco Pellazzotti here, who finished third in the Giro d'Italia a couple of years ago. But out on course, I can tell you that Will Clark has gone through the kilometre check in the best time of a minute 27.82. He's got to threaten the best time at the finish of Kelly Buen. Well, for Franco Pellazzotti, this will be a shock to the system straight out from Europe into the Aussie summer. But for Will Clark, he is right on form. Now, as he held the form from the kilometre at 127.82, it's going to be desperately close. He's aiming at 236.42. It is going to be very, very close here. Will Clark hits the line, and it is the best time. 235.53. Scott, 89 hundredths of a second. Will Clark is now on top of the leaderboard. It's only a few guys left, so hopefully, uh, hopefully I've got a bit of luck and I hang on. Four. It's a nervous wait. And you've got Brenton Jones up there as well, so Drapak are on a good evening so far. Yeah, BJ is super strong, so he's our sprinter here, and uh, hopefully me and him can uh, make a difference in the sprints this week too. All right, we'll get up into the hot seat because it's not long before we see the last man over the line. Well, another man is still to start here as we get now see John Murphy of the USA. He is, in fact, the third last rider to go. Sprinter from the USA, John Murphy. Fast when it comes to that bunch finish, but I'm not sure how he's going to go over the two kilometre distance. And that time from Will Clark was an extraordinary performance. Caleb Nguyen knows exactly how fast it was. And congratulations right now between Brenton Jones and Will Clark. Good to see the two Drapak riders up there on the podium. Well, that top three are covered by one and a half seconds, and that's all. This is Franco Pellazzotti cruising around that corner. He's halfway split. He's not going to rock any anything on the result line at all. He's almost casually coming up the home straight now. So I think there's a little bit of work to be done by Pellasotti before he finds his Italian legs winning races again. Comes over and he's outside the top 70 riders there with a time of uh, 2.48.51. This is Nick Dougal now, South African rider for the South African MTN Quebecer team. I well, can't see him challenging Phil for Will Clark's time. We'll see how he goes. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt and watch him come around the circuit now. But just that performance was incredibly fast. Murphy now onto the finishing straight, down along the Yarra River. Well, John Murphy's time is not uh, is certainly nowhere near as bad as Pelazzotti's was, but he's going to be outside the top 20, I think, even though he's using his famous sprint to bring him up over the home straight here. But the clock doesn't line. It's counting him outside the top 20 here. John Murphy arrives, 242.42, and he slots into 23rd position. Well, the last man. The last man to go. The winner from last year, Simon Clark. Great performance in 2014. Former winner of the King of the Mountains competition. The only Australian to do it at the Tour of Spain, the Vuelta España. Won a stage victory in that race as well. And now he's underway. Can he defend his title from 2014? Well, he won't expect to win this time, so I don't think. Not by the times we've now posted from Brenton Jones, Will Clark and Kelly Buen. But on the other hand, he'll try to limit his losses because I think that's what they'll be. This is Nick Dougal coming home here as he continues up towards the line. Halfway split indicated exactly what we saw at the end there. Eight seconds slower than the best time posted by Will Clark. 
Simon Clark now, no relation to Will, coming up towards the finish for the overall classification. This is looking like a good time for him, even though it's a slightly outside the stage victory. Yes, and look at this now. You can see the urgency on his right here just to limit his losses. And Clark is in, and he's in the seventh best time here. That's a good ride by Simon Clark, 237.33. So Will Clark has won the Corda Mentha Prologue. Couldn't have gone better, really. One and three for for Japak tonight. So um, yeah, it all it all went to plan, really. Yeah. What does it mean for stage one on the roads to Bendigo? Yeah, I guess we've got the leaders' jersey, and uh, BJ's right up there in third position. So um, you know, it's it's quite a hard start, actually. Um, yeah, going up a few climbs there after Mount Macedon and that. So we're gonna yeah have to be on our toes, really. But we've got a strong team, and we'll be um, you know. It's, it's, it's a few days really, it's a few more uh, hard stages of tour, so we've got, yeah, got to ride together as a team and hopefully put, put some guys in the breakaway if that eventuates. First and second for the team, so what does that mean heading into stage one? Yeah, pretty good start, first and third, so it's a good, good performance from a team. Uh, start stage one with two guys on the podium, you can't get much better than that, so hopefully we can keep the ball rolling. There's a number of opportunities for myself and the rest of my teammates throughout the stage uh, of the tour as we go on, so looking forward to tomorrow. A couple of tough climbs though. The winning move was uh, to start hard and uh, carry all my momentum through the corners. Um, yeah, I started quite hard and uh, just tried to carry that speed through every corner and then finish, uh, yeah, finish as hard as I could up the home straight. Well, the prize winners now tomorrow, it's the under-23 rider Caleb Ewan. He'll wear the state government white jersey while the green jersey of chain reaction for points. That will be on the shoulders of Will Clark. And Will Clark also is the leader of this race by a very, very narrow margin. And we can have a look at that margin now. They round up to the nearest second, so he gets a second advantage over Ewan. Same over Jones, two seconds over Sam Bewley. Well, what a great crowd and what a great start to this event. Scott, a blanket finish, and now tomorrow it's anybody's chance. Well, Will Clark, he was third last year, first this time, and they call him the horse because he has so much power, and he really did prove that on the streets of Melbourne. First and third for Drapak. That looks very good for the overall classification in terms of team perspective. They've got a couple of cards to play now, but Simon Clark, the defending champion, he was right in the mix, and he was really just about limiting his losses today yeah. because he's really waiting for the hills. Well, the hill start tomorrow as we start from Mount Macedon and we go on to Bendigo. It's a hard stage tomorrow. It may not be for the sprinters. Caleb Bjorn is a sprinter that can get over these hills, so he's a bit the, the danger man for tomorrow. But I think Simon Clark is looking to really unleash the uh, the beast within on those climbs of Macedon and Alexander. It's going to be a tough day and, and harder than a lot of the riders expect. All right, well, don't miss any of the action. Stay with us. It's day two of the Jaco Hell Sun Tour. That'll be next. Goodbye.